Okay, today I want to talk a little bit about the importance of water. A lot of people overlook the importance of water in maintaining hydration. It's very important for health and it affects everything from exercise to how your brain works to how your heart functions. And it's, an, it's obvious why water is important because the, to, the total body water compri, uh, comprises, uh, total body water I should say, comprises approximately 45 to 75 percent of a person's body weight. Muscle itself is 70, 70, 70 to 75 percent water. You can see the uh, effect of uh, water and muscle when somebody, a bodybuilder, takes too many diuretics, they completely flatten out and it reduces vascularity, the appearance of veins, their muscle looks small and flat because the diuretics can have an overkill, not only reduce uh, extra, uh, what they call subcutaneous water, or water under the skin, but also water in the muscle, which will cause the muscle to flatten out and look small. Uh, what, what the fa even fat contains 10 to 10 to 40 for, uh, 10 to 40 percent water. Water acts as a transporter of nutrients. It regulates body temperature. It lubricates joints and internal organs. It provides structure to cells and tissues, and it helps preserve cardiovascular function. It's commonly recommended. You know, you've probably heard the drink. Uh, the old recommendation: drink eight, uh, eight eight ounce glasses of water a day. They call it the eight by eight rule. The truth of the matter is. Uh, Nobody really knows where that came from. It's arbitrary. It was passed along in the uh, British Journal of Medicine a couple of years ago. They tried to find the source of it. They could not find the source of it. It's not in any physiology book. Somebody just came up with a figure. Uh, I mean, you see this a lot in bodybuilding. Uh, for example, this idea of uh, eating only egg whites and throwing away the yolks, which I've mentioned many times. Uh, nobody ever explains why. In other words, uh, something about the, the calories are in the... Uh, egg yolk and the fat and this it's nonsensical it makes no sense but people just continue to believe that it's a rule so you know they continue to follow something without it's like those lemmings that follow each other off the cliff none of them ever think what they do and they just follow each other and that's the way it is with a lot of these things uh related to nutrition so the eight by eight ounce rule is it's not really true but you certainly do need a certain amount of water i'll get to that later if you don't stay hydrated it definitely affects your physical performance uh, it's particularly evident in uh, high ambient temperatures, like in the summer, when it's hot, the loss of water really becomes apparent for the simple reason that you tend to sweat more. Dehydration can have a noticeable effect if you lose as little as 2% of your body's water content. I believe the figure is 2 to 3% water loss. You start to lose strength when you work out uh, after about 3%. However, it isn't uncommon for athletes to lose as much as 6 to 10% of their water weight uh, through sweating. So you have to definitely keep that water going, especially in hot, uh, hot weather. You know, most of the people carry around water bottles in the gym. They sip it. That makes a lot of sense because you're constantly losing water. I mean, you lose water not, not, not only through the, uh, you know, the obvious uh, uh, routes like urination, that kind of thing, and sweating, but you lose it through insensible perspiration where you're basically losing water all the time. You don't even realize it. So there's a pretty good uh, deep requirement for water replacement. Now, when you lose water, this can lead to uh, altered uh, body temperature control, reduced motivation, and increased fatigue during workouts. It can also make exercise feel much more difficult, both physically and mentally. Optimal hydration has been shown to prevent this from happening, and it may even reduce the oxidative stress that occurs during high-intensity high exercise. Oxidative stress is a known cause of muscle fatigue. This isn't surprising when you consider that muscle is about 72% water, as I said earlier. If you exercise intensely and tend to sweat, staying hydrated can be very important. The brain itself also, you know, your brain is strongly influenced by your hydration status. Studies show that even mild dehydration, such as the loss of 1% to 3% of body weight, can impair many aspects of brain function. In, two, in a 2012 study of 25 young women, researchers found that fluid loss of only 1.4% after exercise impaired both mood and concentration. It also increased the frequency of headaches. In this study, some of the women were given the diuretic Lasix to make them dehydrated. This is a common diuretic that has been used by bodybuilders also. It's very potent. It's called a loop diuretic. Many members of the same research team that studied the women also conducted a similar study of young men in 2011. They found that fluid loss of 1.6% was detri detrimental to working memory and increased and increased feelings of anxiety, fatigue, and tension. A fluid loss of 1.3% equals about 
1.5 to 4.5 pounds of body weight loss in a person weighing 150 pounds. This can easily occur through normal da da daily activities and certainly through uh, exercising in high heat uh, conditions. Many other studies with subjects ranging from children to older adults have shown that mild dehydration can impair mood, memory, and brain performance. Dehydration can produce delirium in older people. In other words, if older people get dehydrated, it looks like they have Alzheimer's disease, when in fact they're just dehydrated. Because what happens there is there, uh, with dehydration, the blood volume, get, uh, uh, your blood is mostly water. So what happens is uh, if the blood volume drops to a certain point, the brain's not actually getting enough oxygen and nutrients, and this could translate into what looks like delirium or some sort of dementia, but it's actually caused by dehydration. De dehydration can also trigger headaches and migraine. Research has shown that, he that a headache is one of the most common symptoms of dehydration. A 2018 study of 393 people found that 40% of the uh, par participants experienced headache as a result of dehydration. What's more, some studies have shown that drinking water can help relieve headaches and those who experience frequent headaches. So if you have frequent headaches, try drinking more water because dehydration can bring on headaches. A 2012 study published in the journal Family Practice of 102 men, 102 men found that drinking an additional 50.7 ounces or 1.5 liters of water per day resulted in significant improvements on the migraine-specific quality of life scale, a scoring system for migraine symptoms. Plus, 47% of the men who drank more water reported headache improvement, while only 25% of the men in the control group who didn't drink extra water reported this effect. Water also obviously helps to present, uh, prevent constipation. If you don't drink water, you, you know, there's a good chance you'll be constipated. That's not fun. Drinking enough water may help prevent kidney stones, while dehydration will promote them. One of the worst things you can do for your kidneys is to dehydrate yourself. Because, you know, because the kidneys depend on a certain amount of blood volume to properly filter the blood. And if they don't get that uh, level of, uh, let's say, sufficient blood volume, the, the, the blood pressure in the kidney rises to accommodate the lack of blood volume. And this causes destruction of the nephrons or the filtering units of the kidneys. Eventually, you have a breakdown of kidneys. In other words, uh, this is why on older people, uh, per average people over 65 only have 40% of their kidney function left. It's a gradual destruction of the kidneys. It's usually due mostly to high blood pressure, but a lot of it has to do with chronic dehydration also. Now, if you drink a lot, you might know that, you know, anyone who drinks, uh, you know, to the point of getting bloated, drunk, you'll notice that you have to pee a lot. The reason for that is that uh, alcohol prevents uh, a... Uh, a, a uh, Pituitary hormone called antidiuretic hormone, uh, it it, uh, it prevents it from uh, being released. So what happens is uh, you wind up losing a lot of water and you can get dehydrated. But the interesting thing is one of the reasons why you feel a hangover so badly is because of dehydration. So if you drink a lot, you, you know, to, to the point of you know getting drunk or something like that, or if you're a habitual drinker, it's also a good idea to definitely increase your water intake to prevent side effects like hangovers and headaches and so forth. Water intake actually acutely reduces heart rate and increases blood pressure in both people with normal blood pressure and people with high blood pressure. These effects of water intake on the pressor, that means increase uh, of blood pressure, on the pressor effect and heart rate occur within 15 to 20 minutes of drinking water and can last up to an hour. Some people who drink very cold water can have their heart rate slow down so much that they pass out. Uh, slow heart rate's medically called bradycardia, uh, and uh, you know they drink wa cold water really fast. It has to do with an interaction between the uh, autonomic nervous system and the heart. But you know the heart rate drops so fast that they they get into what they call syncope, which is basically a medical term for fainting. They literally pass out. <coughs> this, however, it's rare. It doesn't happen very often. You know, so don't worry about it. Water can also help weight loss. A 2013 study of 50 young women who were overweight demonstrated that drinking an additional 16.9 ounces of water three times per day before meals for eight weeks led to a significant reduction in body weight and body fat compared to their pre-study measurements. The timing is very important for this. Drinking water half an hour before meals is the most effective. Uh, it can make you feel more full so you eat fewer calories. 
And in one study, dieters who drank 16.9 ounces of water before meals lost 44% more weight over a period of 12 weeks compared to dieters who didn't drink water. So water itself, uh, uh, and by the way, uh, drinking water, uh, just, just drinking a glass of water, because it stimulates the sympathetic nervous system, actually raises your resting metabolic rate. Uh, and some one study actually compared the rate, the the uh, rise in resting metabolic rate after drinking water, to taking ephedrine, which was a <laughs> that's a supplement, I should say a drug that used to be used by bodybuilders <clears throat> to help them lose body fat before it was banned by the FDA in 2004. And that's a, so I said, as I said, in adults, resting energy ex, resting energy expenditure has been shown to increase by 24 to 30 percent within 10 minutes of drinking water. This la the, 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 it doesn't last that long, though. The increase in uh, resting metabolism uh, after drinking the water only lasts for about an hour. Uh, so, um, uh, how, much how, uh, how much water should you drink a day? Okay, uh, a lot of times you can't, you know, you can't always go by thirst. In other words, sometimes, you know, your thirst is not always the best indicator of how much water you should drink. So the, according to the researchers, uh, well, specifically, the Institute of Medicine suggests that adult men consume 16 cups of water a day, water a day, while adult women should drink 11 cups of water a day. But you also should, also should be aware that you're getting water from other sources, such as fruits and vegetables, which contain about 90% water. But you want to make sure, you, if you're a man, for example, drink about 16 cups of uh, water a day. Uh, that, that's... Um, that comes out to about, uh, let's see, it's about 25, uh, oh, never mind. Just, <laughs> I'm not even going to try and figure out. 16 cups a day for men, 11 cups of water for women. Uh, that should be enough. Uh, a lot of sources will tell you you can judge whether you're dehydrated by the color of your urine. Uh, if it's really uh, like yellowish, really deep yellow, that means you're probably a little dehydrated. I disagree with that because <laughs> they're not taking into account people that take vitamin and mineral supplements. One particular B-complex vitamin called riboflavin or vitamin B2 not only can make your urine appear extremely yellow, but it's actually fluorescent. In other words, it, uh, the urine actually will light up in the dark. <laughs> I, I, I've never seen this, but that's what they say. I do know that riboflavin, in other words, B vitamins especially, will make your uh, urine appear more yellow than usual. So just the color of your urine is not I, not a good indicator of dehydration, and yet you'll read that over and over again in a lot of articles. It's not it's nonsensical, especially the bodybuilders and people are health minded because they take food supplements and stuff. There are there are even protein will make your urine uh, look a little yellowish. So you know it doesn't apply to active people, and yet they keep writing this nonsense about check the color of your urine. It's just ridiculous. But anyway, it's one of those things again that's repeated over and over again that nobody ever thinks about. So that's basically the uh, basics of water. In other words, it, it, you know, to sum it up, in hot, wa in hot weather, you definitely want to increase your water intake. Uh, there's no question about it. Uh, there is a point, of course, uh, what they call hyperhydration, where you could drink too much water. I mean, there was, I remember there was a, a radio contest a couple of years ago where they were... Uh, they were going to give some prizes to people who drank the most water within an hour, I think it was. I don't remember exact details, but I remember this one young woman, she was about 32 years old. She drank so much water that she went into convulsions and died. In other words, what happens is if you overdrink water, you dilute the electrolytes. Those are the trace minerals that's needed for nerve conduction in your brain and nervous system. You could dilute them so much that you interfere with the neural transmission which can cause you to go into convulsions and possibly die. It can even affect your heart. So there is a point of drinking too much water, but it almost never happens to the average person. The, the people that are most in, in danger of uh, having that uh, occur are people like that engage in stupid radio contests where they you know, drink as much water in the, within an hour, or ultra-endurance uh, athletes or even marathoners. You know, they keep drinking water throughout the race to uh, stay hydrated. But, you know, there's a little bit of a problem there. You could wind up hyperhydrated where, you know, again, you'll go into convulsions. Most of the time you don't die, but it's not fun. 
I mean, you know, so there is a limit. So I think that's about all I could say right now about water. There's more to say, but I'll have to cover that. Uh, oh, and let me quickly add, you know, obviously, uh, I'll just quickly add, a lot of bodybuilders take diuretics to uh, reduce water content in the body. They, you know, they think that it's going to make them look more cut, more defined. You know, they're afraid of water retention, especially the, the guys and women that use steroids, because steroids do retain some minerals that hold on to water, like sodium. So, so that to offset that, they tend to take diuretic drugs. As I said earlier, the problem with diuretics is that they can be overkill. They can take the water right out of your muscle and make you look flat and small. But a little known fact is that water itself is the best natural diuretic. Let me give you a flat statement. The more water you drink, the more water you lose. Why? Because the more water you drink, the more you turn off that antidiuretic hormone I mentioned from the pituitary. And then when that's turned off, the water literally passes right through you. So when you drink water, not only do you excrete the water you drank, but you also drink, I'm sorry, you excrete extra water that you might be holding in the tissues in the extracellular space, it's called. So basically drinking enough water will accomplish the same thing as taking diuretics without the uh, possibility of making you flat, causing mineral depletion, making you pass out, and making you have heart problems. So I just uh, want to throw that in. So that's about it for water. If you want to have the best information, most accurate, in-depth, uh, evidence-based information on nutrition, exercise science, hormonal therapy, anti-aging research, fat loss techniques that really work, ergogenic aids, women's health and fitness, hormonal therapy, and much more, Subscribe today to my to my Applied Metabolics newsletter, www.appliedmetabolics.com. It's about 40 to 50 pages every month, extremely in-depth. I cover, uh, as I said, all those topics. Other uh, digital publications might cover nutrition or exercise, but nobody covers as many topics as me. And none of these people that publish those other publications can match my nearly 60 years of constant study and empirical experience by being in the trenches in the gym. I know what works and I know what doesn't work. Uh, so, you know, if you really want the voice of experience, you, you subscribe to my newsletter. You will learn a lot. I don't care what your level of education is. If you subscribe, I'll send you an invitation to join my private Applied Metabolics Facebook page, where each day I post new information on nutrition, exercise, science, general medicine, and health. There's also an email portal on my Applied Metabolics webpage exclusively for subscribers who could send me short questions about anything they might have read in the newsletter or anything else that comes to mind. Short questions I'll answer. Uh, I, I will not uh, answer unsolicited questions. I don't have the time and my subscribers come first. You're welcome to, <laughs> I know you guys who've seen my videos have heard this spiel before, but I got to say in every video because, you know, in case there's anybody new listening, so pardon me. Uh, also, you're welcome to leave comments under, uh, under, under this video. Uh, hopefully they're nice comments. If they're not, I'm just going to ignore them anyway. So if you're wasting your time, I'm not going to respond to trolls. Uh, and, and trolls also include people that, uh, that complain that I mispronounced the word. You know, and you know what the funny thing about that is? A lot of the people that complain about me mispronouncing a, a word, and there are always words that are hard to pronounce, by the way, uh, usually are, don't really write with any, so any sense of grammar. Uh, they'll, miss, they'll have misspellings and things like that, and they're correcting me for mispronouncing a word, which I find rather ironic. <laughs> anyway, but anyway, uh, so that's about it. Um, you know, if you have uh, suggestions for future videos, feel free. I mean, I'll try and consider uh, subjects I think that will interest a large number of people. No esoteric subjects like urine therapy or... Uh, you know, walking on your hands uh, for 24 hours a day or, you know, living on, on uh, polar bear liver, none of that stuff because it's just uh, too, too, too little people are interested in that. And I'm not talking about short people. I mean, too few people, I should say, <laughs> are interested in that. Anyway, if you want to have the best friend you'll ever have, go to your local shelter, adopt a dog. They're the greatest, the best. Take care.